So hello, State of the Map US. Um, welcome to our pre presentation of generative state addresses from OSM. Um, first of all, this is my first time in State of the Map. And um, with this awesome crowd, I am really glad to meet uh, each one of you. And today, I will uh, introduce you our approach for generative state addresses. Um, so this project is developed at Facebook with a small team that is listed there. Um, and it was developed under supervision of Ramesh Askar. Uh, we also have some team members here with us. Um, for example, Drishti is there. Uh, she started Facebook with our project. Also, Barrett there, um, really invaluable sources for our project. So thank you guys and thank you everyone that contributed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks to that team, you, all you're about to see is developed. So. Why street addresses are important? Why we need adequate mapping? Let me ask you, how many of you had a unique address up to your house or up to your flat number back home? Not in US, but back home, let's say. Oh, cool. Okay, not that many. That's, so that's why. <laughs> exactly, that's why. So in US, we have in Europe, in US, in developed countries, we have many, uh, we have adequate street addressing, but um, in other uh, countries, especially um, um, countries that the resources are not there much, 75% um, of the world lives without adequate addressing, if we check all of them. And because of that, United Nations says that those people are invisible. Why invisible? The infrastructure is, there, is not there. The crisis uh, response is not there. The, all, all, the, like, all the things that we have cannot go there because there's no addressing. I mean, it's not, of course, just addressing, but that's one of the main components. And disaster zones, crisis response needed immediate uh, coordination and geolocation, and um, that needs to be generated like on the fly. So, can we help remote mapping by automatically generating street addresses is in disaster zones for immediate aid? Do you think we can do that? Do you think we should do that? Yes, thank you. <laughs> So, uh, talking about naming things, there are geocoding solutions specifically focusing on naming, and um, those are like if you are in a point at A, and if you want to go to B, um, those little uh, geocoding schemes are all like um, taken from other uh, automatic solutions, which actually, um, which are scalable, but they are actually grid aligned, so they assume that we can put squares on top of the world and we can address everything, but that doesn't give any, so th those are just hashes, jo those are just like attitude, longitude information and presented in a different way. So there's no special queue, there's no city state country information, there's no accessibility and there's no road geometry. So for those, um, we, so we as humans need street ad streets and addresses should be based on streets. Um, in the literature, there are many approaches to for generative maps. Um, in graphics, there are procedure generation that fits models to target world. Um, in vision communities, there's map enhancement and extracting information from real world and um, doing road segment segmentation, spatial data integration, etc. However, all of those like research approaches or also automated approaches need to be bridge the automation and the annotation, right? Because we can have all those beautiful theoretic approaches, but if they are not like going into a real world, then why we have them, right? We also need to label and organize the geometry to make it useful. And to do that, we actually looked at the organic addressing addresses like we have like in everywhere. Um, one of the best examples um, is London Postal Code System. And they are like radial regions based on orientation and distance. So in the middle, we have um, the downtown. Then the north of the downtown is N. The south is, uh, <laughs> south is west. Wow. The west is, we the west is W, etc. And it goes like one, two, three. So we also looked at other schemes like um, barreling numbering, like zigzag houses or uh, meter markers, or etc. So we researched what is going on with traditional addresses that can help us. Based on those research and based on those computational approaches, um, we are posing those questions like, how can we create a generative human-friendly addressing scheme, which we want it to be automa automated, but we still want the humans to, use, to actually uh, use it, and how we can assign temporary street addresses that are backward compatible to co coordinate crisis response, because that's what we are focusing on. So just think about that, like a generic US street 75A, Chestnut Street, Palo Alto, California, US. 
easy to understand. You see that, okay, it's Chestnut Street and it's like um, at 75, like not probably meter marker, but 75 fifth place that it goes incremental and A means probably apartment A, etc. So how can we kind of convert it to an automatic or generative scheme? So um, Robocodes has four alphanumeric fields. Um, they are all hierarchical and linear. I will show them. And they want to, so we want to close the gap between physical addresses and automated geocoding. So the last field is uh, state and country information. If there's states, there's no states, it's just country. The third field is the city uh, abbreviation. The second field is regions and roads. Um, sorry, regions. The second field is actually the street name, but it includes the region name and the uh, road number. And the first field is the meter marker and the block offset. So. How does that work? Here, for example, you can see that this road is WA29, and this is 346B, and this is 327A. So it means that this is at the 327th uh, meter of this road, and it's A distance from the road, and this is like B distance from the road. This is even, this is odd, even means it's this side, odd means this side. So, if you check the other ones, for example, these are like uh, going from the road, so from B to E, it increments. And this is along the same road on the same side, both are odd and both are, uh, both are increasing in this. So that gives an idea about how it's actually resembling the real street addresses, right? So let's go to the uh, scheme a little bit more in detail. Um, so the regions are actually uh, following the London Postal Scheme Code. Um, it, the downtown is C, south, west, north. Um, for example, this little yellow house here would be WB, because it's W and it's like B distance, approximately, of course, from the downtown. Um, the road naming scheme, oh, sorry. The road naming scheme is, um, shows the distance from the center and it contains orientation in odd parity. So if it's like north south bound, it is odd. If it's west east bound, it's even, etc. And along each row, so, so for this little house, again, it would be WB14. 14. 14 means like it's in this directionality and it's like 14, um, relatively 14th road. And house numbering scheme is meter markers on the road, like starting from the beginning and going here. Then offsetting from the road, which is 38K WB14. So this is how the actual uh, street name and house numbering works. So we had many design choices. I will not go over all of them, but uh, we want this to be really human friendly. So it should be memorable. It should be intuitive. It should give you a, a self location of where you are. So if uh, my friend is um, like 10 meters away from me and I want to know where that friend is, I don't Maybe I don't even need to map to just walk 10 meters in that way because our others reflect that. So this is our pipeline. Um, we start by extracting road masks from satellite images by deep learning. Then we find the individual road segments from those predictions. Then we create regions from the road graph and label the um, parcels by distance fields. Focusing on the um, so th this image is uh, taken from a developing country. You can see that the urban structure in the satellite image is not really easy to detect and organize. So um, that's also there are like the different uh, weather, that different illumination conditions, etc. So um, it's not really an easy task to even find the roads and. Um, if you remember the first day, Drishti gave an awesome talk about how they are doing the road extraction, etc. So this is based on that. So. Um, after the training data is done, and after the training is done, we have such predictions that looks like this, okay? Um, and as you can see, the predictions are not complete either, so they need to go more processes to get the actual road segments. Um, we also had some other experiments to decide on which uh, neural network is better uh, based on our data, based on the country, etc. All the details are, are in the paper, and you can just like um, read the paper about what we tried. <laughs> so. Uh, then, from the predictions, we go to the road segments. Um, we do some thresholding and some traditional com computer vision approaches to get the road segments, and the road segments look like this at the end. So, even if the uh, road is really not uh, straight, we can just find the road segments um, based on the orientation and marketing. 
from the road segments, we create the road graph, and we cluster that road graph based uh, to increase the um, intercluster um, communications and inter minimize the intercluster communications. Again, the details are in the paper, but what we are uh, doing is we want to find the neighborhoods uh, which mimic the actual um, actual neighborhoods, right? Like it can be divided by um, by mountains, it can be divided by rivers, there may be like some other obstacles that are actually dividing two neighborhoods, etc. So those regions are trying to mimic the real world, the real world um, neighborhoods. So we also had some region experiments, and you know, like graph partitioning is not a really um, solved uh, approach. Even if, uh, and, and in the case that you don't really have um, a ground truth for neighbors, because it's just, just an approximation, approximation, and we don't know where the neighborhoods are. So we had um, some experiments about that, and um, again, the details can be found in the paper. Um, so after we have the regions. We mark the densest area as a downtown and bucket other regions based on their orientation to get to, to the London Postal, Postal Code scheme. Um, then they are bucketed in south, north, east, west. And after the regions are named, we find the two major axes of the roads. So if the roads are mostly like discrete and they are um, um, following an alignment of this, then we are saying, OK, this is, these two are the major axes. So this is odd, this is even. So we bucket all the roads based on that to decide on, on their odd parity in their naming. Finally, we are creating the meter markers and block offsets. So meter markers are just basically um, the meter markers along the road, and the offsets are the distance fields along the road. So if you see the gradient here, those gradients are actually a step size for the block. So. Um, as an output, our system generates OSM uh, format files with labeled roads. However, since it does not make sense to output addresses for each 5x5 five five area, we compute the meter marking and offsetting on the fly. Um, and we also have um, more tools for efficient spatial querying. Uh, we added more uh, tools for efficient querying. And we also have an experimental mobile app for self-navigation. So it, it's just like a paper map, but in mobile. So there's no navigation in it, but you can self-navigate using our robocodes. Uh, we also uh, observed that um, if people are using robocodes for self-location, the, um, there is 20%, 21.7% 20, decrease in their arrival times. Um, so this is an output of our system. This is the robocodes. All the roads are extracted from satellite images. And you can see the name of the road. So here we go to a point, click at that point, and the address is automatically given um, on the fly. And this is like a for geocoding, coding, but we can also do the inverse. And now like uh, we are querying, oh, there is um, another address, which is, I guess, 2K. Uh, 2AWK11, if I remember correctly. And so they are uh, entering that information. Where is it in the map? And come on, it would be cool. Yes. <laughs> and it shows that it is there, so it's on the map. Um, so that's how, how, how they are done. Um, so we have evaluated our outputs um, against the ground truth. Uh, most of the times, the system learns 90% of the road. Um, approximately 80%. And it's, of course, better in urban and more structured environments. Um, we tested in uh, USDs, but like um, all if it, it, this is just like a, a mental comparison of how we are doing. And these are actually more, um, more results from our approach. So satellite imagery, roads, um, regions, and the actual addresses. So this is like the distance fields that you fall into. Um, so this improves the coverage up to 80%. It processed more than 200 districts, and um, we, we saw that regions follow natural boundaries. Again, another example, satellite imagery, roads, regions, and addresses. Um, so why you should use robocodes? Most important part. Um, generating almost immediate temporary addresses is one of the use cases, which is either useful for crisis response and uh, temp temporary addressing. And this is, for example, uh, robocodes generated for recent flood zones, one of the recent flood zones. You can also do like, OK, remote the roads are done, re road geometry is done, but what about remote labeling? Um, so this can be like a tool to increase the efficiency of remote processing. So this is um, a, a, an area that is taken from OSM and then 
generated robocodes for a humanitarian mapathon. It's just like export, process, and visualize. That's it uh, with the robocodes. And of course, human friendly addresses. They are not. They are still aligned, not grid based. They bake the distance and orientation information. They are backward compatible with OSM, and the dual representation can be used for both humans and machines. So for future work, uh, we can use other data sources like population density and smart par parcel subdivision algorithms, etc., which are whatever open, whatever is open uh, to um, integrate it with the, the, the uh, addressing scheme to improve it. We can also learn other tedious tasks to uh, help people because like automated things can be done with uh, machines. So we just that that can be as a pre-processing step to make the human um, human's job much better. So this is an example of that. For example, if we can just by machines find the um, lands, land cover types uh, for like, I know many people that are working in satellite imagery is working on this problem. So if we can say the water bodies and uh, that will be really in, um, in decrease the time of the actual human annotation because it just after that goes to validation, which is probably easier than just like doing it from scratch. Um, so we presented a robust generative addressing scheme. We presented how to um, extract that generative addressing scheme with deep learning and graph partitioning. We also showed that how the how robocodes can be um, can be used for um, immediate mapping and mapping and crisis response. So thank you, thank you for robocodes team. <laughs> thank you for annotators, users, mappers, friends, everyone, Facebook maps team, geo team, related teams, everyone that is supporting the project and. You can go generate robocodes <laughs> now uh, for questions. The emails are there. Um, the code is there, open source on GitHub, robocode.info. And the paper, if you are interested in the uh, technical part of it more, but I skipped, I know, sorry. <laughs> but you can go there. And that's it. So thank you for everything. Um, reach out to us if you have questions. Thank you very much. So we have about five minutes for questions. Um. Uh, awesome talk. This is like such a clever, cool idea. Um, Thank and you. It, <laughs> and I really love the energy that you brought to the room with, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, my question was, and maybe you covered this and I missed it, but how deterministic and how temporary are the addresses? Like how much modification needs to happen to my surrounding area before my address changes? That's a good question. Um, so we keep saying it's temporary, right? So it is temporary because your road may change. There may be a new road. There may be a float that is washing away one road and it's not there anymore. The building may be demolished. Et so those can all happen. So this is... Um, you create it once, and if there is no maintenance mechanism be behind that, if there is no database, if they are not stored in a database, if they are not like released as a version open data, etc., then of course, like um, they will be just like generated and used for that use case, and then later it can't be used for more more purposes. That's why we we, we keep saying it temp. Um, of course, more. Um, more infrastructure can be um, spent on that to have uh, that all, everything um, stored in a uh, in a database or stored in an open format so that everyone can just query it instead of just generating robocodes. Um, like crawlery question: If um, is there a danger of like because um, the addresses are tied to the version, the exact time that the data was generated from OSM? Mm. So is there like? Have you thought about what happens when like, someone accidentally updates the OSM data set, but the old addresses are still being used by people? Exactly. That's why we keep saying it should be backward compatible and they are temporary. So in that case, we we have some um, like details we can talk offline. We have some details that we are actually doing like in the middle addresses. Like instead of saying like 10A, we do it like 10A1, 10A2, etc. Because if there's a new road in between that that was not there before, we need to add it to the scheme without actually destroying the, the linear and hierarchical information. So we have some um, like tricks to handle that, but um, the ultimate idea should be, it should be in a 
common database in an open database that um, everyone can contribute and query and update so that the versioning and the in-betweenness can be um, coherent within all, 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 um, all instances of those addresses. You, you don't have a question anymore? I can help you. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Um, so if there's a crisis, um, does Facebook plan on being on the ground, like helping people? So anything that I said today is just a research project. There is no um, Facebook, Facebook doesn't apply this to anywhere, doesn't like, upload it to anywhere. It's just a research project that we are presenting this as a technical contribution. But if you want to use our, um, pro uh, our um, project and our code in your own, um, I don't know, humanitarian map pattern or like immediate crisis response project, then you are more than welcome to uh, use our open source code. But Facebook doesn't apply, it, doesn't use it anywhere. Maybe in future, we don't know. <laughs> but no, not for now. <laughs> Good. Quick question from me here. Uh, what about using uh, human-friendly neighborhoods in the neighborhoods that were established there for years, you know, Mexico, Colonia, and yeah, you know, neighborhoods so, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, so what I said was totally for developing countries that we have no information about. Like, there's no open data set or, or some doesn't have any information or we cannot query anything. For those, of, those places that there's already some information, we query it like we can. And at some point, we will query it from OSM, just um, like um, combine all the information. Like if there's already neighborhoods and if there's already street names, if there's already some information that we can use, we actually use it. And for the missing ones, we are doing the addressing. But the, to preserve the uh, linear and hierarchical information, for example, uh, a street may have a phantom name in the back end, in the machine use, because we want like 10A, 10, sorry, sorry, 10, a, 11A, etc. So if 11A is actually river road, we want to keep it as river road. <laughs> but for to keep it like linear, it's still 11A in, in at the back end to um, assign uh, a, a pointer, right? Like we know pointers to uh, assign a pointer to to that road. Same for neighborhoods too. Yeah. I have a question. So did you guys uh, analyze the output of this, for example, based on different countries? I mean, you mentioned US, but besides US, um, did you generate robot codes for other countries? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, US was just like one of the examples. So these are, um, oops. Yeah, this is like a developing com country. And there is almost no roads for this, this region. And all of them are generated. So this is one of the cases that we increase the map coverage from uh, increase the map coverage 80%. Like 80% is a huge number, right? <laughs> so, um, and also this one, this one is also a developing country. Uh, maybe, maybe showing it like this is better. Yeah, this one is also a developing country. So only the first example that I showed was US to just have a sanity check that like, oh, we are doing good in the map, map places too, yes. And then, that, then we go to harder cases like this. Okay, cool. Thank there you. are more examples in the paper. You can just check the paper. We can only take one last question. In, uh, in some of the examples, it looked like these were places where there was, there was no mapping. So there were, you were adding the geometry and also then adding the robocodes. But can those two be separated? So for example, if there's an area that's mapped, but yet the geometry is all there, but we don't have naming, then you could use robocodes Definitely. As well. So the example that I showed here, maybe I was not clear. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, where is it? Yeah. The example that I showed here is actually based on just on OSM. Um, the naming is done on top of OSM because the roads were there, but the na naming and street addresses were not there because there's actually no street addresses in the ground. Like the road is there, but they don't call the road. They call it like behind the market or etc. So the naming here, uh, the road geometry here is taken from OSM and the robocodes are done uh, on top of that. So uh, definitely the pipeline can be broken into um, like road geometry and then labeling. And what we are trying to do was actually uh, focusing more on the on the labeling scheme because the road geometry is like OSM is already <laughs> like uh, so so much so beautiful information. And um, as Drishti said in the previous Facebook talk, they are like doing incredible things with the uh, validation and then like uh, updating the road network. So definitely like that is the um, safer way if we start with a better road, road geometry. But what we are saying is like, 
if we don't have nothing, don't have anything, and we need to respond to a crisis, then what do you do? You just have the satellite image. You don't have anything. Like no open data, no, no, no nothing. Then we can go from satellite images if there is nothing. Thank you very much. You can find me outside. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.